turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Philippians. I'd like to read from Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 3, reading through verse 14. Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 3. The Word of God says, We are... For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he uh, might trust in the flesh, I more. Then he begins to talk about how he had If a man could trust in his flesh, here was his pedigree. The circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want us to primarily think about verse 13 where the Apostle Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Now, there are a number of different times in the Bible where you find those two words, one thing. David makes this statement in the Psalms. He says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. That was the one thing that David desired, was to dwell in the house of the Lord. On another occasion, Jesus makes this statement to the rich young ruler, about one thing. He says, one thing thou what? One thing thou lackest. He told him what to do. On another another occasion when Mary and Martha were with Jesus, uh, Jesus told uh, Martha, one thing is needful. One thing is needful. So there are a number of times in the Bible where one thing is mentioned and I think it's a good study to go back and look at each of those one things. The one thing that Paul talks about here, he says, one thing I do, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind And reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God 
in Christ Jesus. Now, God has impressed on my heart and mind this week in studying that the one thing that has to be done in all of our lives is to forget those things which are behind. There are other things that are mentioned here. After he talks about forgetting those things which are behind, he talks about two other things in particular. But the one thing that Paul had under consideration, the one thing he must do is to forget those things which are behind. Now certainly there are many things we're told to remember. The Word of God repeatedly talks about remember, remember, remember. This is one of those occasions where God says there are things we need to forget. There are a lot of things that we need to forget. When people have treated us wrongly, we need to pray, God, help me to forgive and to forget that. Help me to forgive people and help me to forget what they have done against me. That's hard to do. But you can't do the next two things until you first forget some things. There are even occasions where it's absolutely necessary for us to forget people before we can press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus. We can't do the next two steps until there are some people that we just put out of our minds. The devil will often have people, especially in middle age and older age, the devil will have them to begin to think about people from way back when they were in high school or uh, people that used to be their friends a long time ago. Many times they are people that were their friends when they were not Christians. And sometimes the devil would have us to reacquaint with them and to begin to go back and spend a lot of time with them. It's very, very dangerous for you to do that. Especially if those people from your past, if they have not changed the way they're living, if they're not living a Christian life, you better not go back and reacquaint yourself with them. In fact, I would say it is imperative that you forget people that are not walking with God, that you stop wanting to be with them. Here's the way Jesus expressed it when we are thinking about forgetting those things which are behind. Forget things. You know, sometimes we've lost things and we just need to forget about it. You might have lost your home. Well, don't need to be thinking about that or you can't do the next two good things. You need to forget about that home. If you can't go back to your home, there's no use in you crying and fretting and being upset every day about something you can't change from the past. You need to forget those things and you need to press toward more things that will bring you joy. But here's what Jesus said. In Luke chapter 9 and verse 62, Jesus said, no man, having put his hands to the plow, and what are the next two words? Looking back, no man, having put his hands to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot be fit for the kingdom of God. You cannot press toward the prize. You cannot do the other things that, that the word of God tells us to do here until you do the first thing, the one thing that Paul said he had to do was to forget those things that are behind. You remember Lot's wife, after they came out of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, God had told them, don't look back. Forget about those things that are behind. But Lot's wife did not take heed to that and she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. Well, you know, her life ended. She was dead because she looked back. She did not 
heed what Paul says that we need to do right here, forgetting those things which are behind. Turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 11 very quickly. In Hebrews chapter 11, the Word of God talks about people that had to leave some very precious things and leave precious people. When Jesus would say, follow me, did the apostles have to leave many things and follow Jesus? Uh, many of the apostles were fishermen. You know what the Bible says they did? They left their nets. They left and set aside what they had been doing and followed Jesus. They had to forget about fishing for a while. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 8, the Word of God, Word of God talks about Abraham. What did God call Abraham to do? God called Abraham to get out of thy country and I'll make, thee a, make of thee a great nation. Get out of your country. Brethren, I'll tell you that's a hard thing to do when God calls on you to leave your country, to leave the area that you're familiar with, to leave your home, to leave your kindred. But that's what God called Abraham to do. He says, get out of thy country. And whenever he got out of his country, you know what he had to do? What's the subject this morning? He had to forget those things that were behind. If he didn't forget those things that were behind, he could not press toward what he was looking for. He had to first and continuously work at forgetting what he left. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. The word of God says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, uh, and he went out and not knowing whither he went, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. What was that city? That city was the kingdom of heaven, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. And he was looking for that city. But brethren, he could not continue to look for that city if he did not forget the country he left behind. He had to put that out of his mind before he could concentrate on going toward that city. And the same thing's true in all of our lives. We're called upon by God to leave the things of the world. And if we don't leave the things of the world and forget those things which are behind, we're going to continuously have a struggle in our life. We're going to be trying to go forward into the kingdom of heaven, but we're going to continuously be pulled backward because we haven't... We haven't what? We haven't forgotten. See, I think that's the reason Paul says this one thing... I do. This is the most important thing for Paul to do was to forget those things that were behind. It's the most important thing for all of us to understand. There are things that we have to forget. Put them aside and forget them. Go with me to verse 15 of this same chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 15. And truly if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. Now, what was the country they came out of? Uh, specifically, it's talking about Egypt. If they had been mindful of that country, Egypt, that they came out of, I'll tell you, brethren, they might have gone backward. And even Abraham, if he had been mindful of the country he came out of, he might have gone back to that country instead of going on like he was called upon by God to go forward. What was the one thing Paul had to do? Forget those things that were behind. What was the one thing Abraham had to do? He had to forget those things that were behind. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 beginning in verse 24. God calls Moses now. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months. Verse 24 says, by faith Moses, when he was 
come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I want to stop right there and let you know, brethren, that Moses had a wonderful position and was enjoying the pleasures in Egypt while he was recognized and known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And then when God called him to lead the children of Israel, to lead them out of Egypt and lead them through the wilderness, how do you think, how do you think Moses felt? Oh, brethren, he was heavily burdened. And yet, the next verse says, verse 26 says, well, verse 25, let me read 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Were there treasures in Egypt? Yes, there were. Were there things that were even not ungodly that were treasures in Egypt? Yes, there were many treasures that were not ungodly that were treasures. And he had to leave them all in order to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. For he had, re he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. What was that reward? It was the same thing that Paul was looking for when he says, uh, Forgetting this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. What are the things in front of us? Those are spiritual things. They're far greater than all the natural things that we leave behind. And those spiritual things that Moses was reaching for and looking for and looking to. But that, hey, brethren, those treasures there were greater than all the treasures in Egypt. But he couldn't go after those treasures until he what? Until he forgot those treasures that he left behind. This one thing I do. I want to emphasize, brethren, that every one of us each of us, we need to pray that God will help us understand I cannot go forward. I cannot reach forth unto those things that are out there that God would have for me. I cannot go after the things that God would have me to have. I can't seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness until I leave and forget a lot of other things in my life. This one thing I do, it's the most important thing to do before you can reach forth unto those things which are before, before you can go after that prize, you have to forget those things that are behind. Go with me back to, well, go forward just a moment. Hit one more page, Hebrews chapter 12. After he talks about all these in Hebrews 11, and they, every one of these had to forget the things that were behind. Everybody in Hebrews 11 had to forget some things that were behind. And then in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Word of God says. Wherefore seeing. We also are compassed about. With so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside. Every weight. And the sin. Which doth so easily beset us. Now what's that doing. When we're laying aside every weight. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. We're forgetting. Those things which are behind. We're laying aside every weight. Every weight is not sinful. But there are things that will interfere with us going forward and reaching forth to those things that are before. Lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You can't run that race until you first lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let's run with patience the race that is set before us. Back up in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. The Word of God makes this same truth very clear in Colossians chapter 3. It does it in Ephesians. He says, in the book of Ephesians, he says, put off the what? Put off the old man. Have you ever picked the old man back up? Put him off and then what? Pick him back up. You know when you know when we pick up the old man again? When we don't forget. Put off the old man 
and forget the old man. Put off the old man and make no provision for the flesh. Put off the old man and put on the new man. And forget about the old man. In uh, Colossians chapter 3 he expresses it this way. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ. Now I would ask you this morning. Do you believe that you are risen with Christ? Do you believe that when you died you went down with Christ? Uh, when, when he died that you went down with Christ? And when he arose that you were risen with Christ? Were you in Christ? Were you chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world? Were you placed in Christ when he went down into that grave? I'll tell you what brethren if you are risen with Christ if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now the only way I can set my affection on things above and not set my affection on things of the earth is if I forget those things which are behind. If I lay them aside, if I put off the old man and then I forget about that, and I go forward in my service to God, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, knowing that the prizes and the blessings and the glory that are experienced in the presence of Jesus are far greater than all the joys of this world combined. There's nothing in this world that compares to the joy of being with, in fellowship with Jesus every day. Go with me back now in just a moment to Philippians chapter 3 where we started Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 and 14. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. <laughs> had, had Paul already done a lot of things? Amen. And had he, had he put off the old man? Had he put off the old man? Absolutely. Had he laid aside every weight that in the sin? Did he count all things but dung that he might win Christ? He had done everything. Was he reaching forth unto those things which are before? Was he reaching forth? Yes. Had he reached some of those things that were out in front of him? Yes. But were there more things out there that he had not yet reached? I think all of you in this congregation this morning have to some degree more, some more than others, but to some degree, I think everybody in this congregation has forgotten some things that are behind, and that's good. And I think everybody in this congregation, to some degree, has reached forth into those things that are before and have laid hold, have laid hold on some wonderful spiritual blessings. I want, to want you to remember this when the scripture says in the Corinthian letter, I have not seen nor ear heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. When you're loving God, he has things prepared for you. I'm not just talking about in glory when you die. I'm talking about right now, day by day. There are wonderful things that the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard. But there are wonderful things that God has prepared for them that love him. When you are loving him by forgetting those things which are behind, when you're loving him first and foremost, then you're going to experience great joys. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the mark. I press. I would remind you that Luke chapter 16 and verse 16 Jesus says that the law and the prophets were until John and since that time the kingdom of God is preached and every man, you fill in this blank, every man what? Presses, Presses into it. When the apostle Paul here in Philippians chapter 3 he says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He was pressing into the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. And he entered into that kingdom.
I want you to notice in, in uh, closing, turn to 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Listen please to verses 6 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 and 7. The Apostle Paul says, For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Isn't that a wonderful blessing? Had he run his course? Had he finished his course? Had he, had he forgotten those things that were behind and reached forth unto those things that were before and pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus? And now he says, I have finished my course. He's not pressing anymore. I have finished my course. And then the last statement he makes is, I have kept the faith. I pray that God will help every one of us to remember. I've always known that we need to forget those things that are behind. But the importance of forgetting those things that are behind has never been as strong on my heart and mind as they are today. That it is imperative, it is absolutely essential that we forget those things that are behind. That's the first step of serving God is to set those things aside and forget those things that are behind is my prayer for Christ's sake. Amen. Brother David. 378. We'll stand as